Hey, it's the Chief coming to you with a preview, a preview from PSC. It's Melito. Now this is from Martin Wallace and PSC, but some of you may know a game that this is very, very close to. It shares almost the same rule set, Field of Glory, which was based off of a miniatures game for Ancients Combat. Um, I will tell you the two, well, the biggest difference is you've got a red army and a blue army, 48 cards if I remember, and they're identical, and you go through a simple card drafting of shuffle all 48 of your cards, you shuffle all 48 of yours, you're the blue, I'm the red, uh, you draw four, and I have to dump two, keep two, dump two, keep two, dump two, keep two, and I build my army to fight you from that simple card drafting technique. Got it. Otherwise, they share not everything, but a lot, lot, lot of stuff in common. Enough said of that. So this is prototype version. This is going to be, um, I believe, on Kickstarter soon. I don't know exactly when. So of course the rules are just in a printed format, and it's not the former box. Formal box, but if I can get it open, hello. The cards I was told are um, in pretty much final form, and you're going to see that they are clean, very easy to read, and instead of having a blue deck, red deck, you have six different decks, six different decks, don't count the terrain deck, six different decks of different armies that are pre-set up. And they come with a nice little reference card for each one that I'll show you, so that you can look and say Republican Romans, okay, they have eight leaders, seven heavy infantry, four light infantry, three spears, three medium infantry, three medium cavalry, and two archers. But maybe you don't want to play with them. You want to play with the Persians. Maybe you don't want the Persians. You want the Imperial Romans instead, or the ancient British, or the Carthaginians, or the Macedonians. The Macedonians come with eight leaders, seven pikes, four spears, three light infantry, two slingers, two companions, two heavy cavalry, and two light cavalry. I did not play with these guys. I do not know what the companions do. Maybe they're Firefly-esque? Probably not. Probably not. All right. And I'm going to go in and show you how they play. But the uh, I'll show you a real quick lineup. But that part works very similar again in layout, where you're going to have five terrain cards, mostly open plane. I'm going to be playing my units down on one side of the table or on one side of a terrain card. You're playing them on another, and we're doing a battle. And it's 15 to 20 minutes, tops. Um, uh, we're using leaders to either augment attacks or defense or to get units in place where we want them, which is exactly what leaders do. You win if you control three different terrain cards at the beginning of your turn. Uh, games are so fast, again, 15 to 20 minutes. Even if you're getting walloped, it's going to be over pretty quick. But there is a layer of depth in the strategy where you can use some flank attacks. And how you're going to set those up is very interesting. And the layer of which... Uh, the layer in which the turn runs adds to that level of strategy as well. Enough of me telling you, let me go show you a little bit. All right, when you go to set up, each player selected their army. You're going to have terrain cards. you got nine total, six of which are planes, and three of which are going to be different types of other terrain. Wood, rough, hill. They all come with some modifiers that adjust how they play, how they work. So you can kind of see what we got going on. Let's just throw, it's, it's, it's going to help in the uh, description, we'll throw the rough terrain in there. Uh, the other ones, just off to the side. All right, so you take your deck, you shuffle it up, you draw nine cards from your hand. You just set down these as a draw pile, wherever you want them to go. 
Uh, I don't have much edge here, so we're just going to take them off screen because this is going to be the playing field. You're going to be fighting, and I don't know why I laid them out this way. You're going to be fighting for control of these terrain cards. And they're placed lengthwise because as you gain control of them, you're going to turn the control marker toward whichever um, player has control. You win the game by controlling three different terrain cards. As long as you control three different terrain cards at the beginning of your turn, so it's not at any time, just at the beginning of your turn, you'll win. All right, so at the beginning of a turn, the first thing I would check and see if I controlled three different terrain X's, I would win. Second thing you're doing is seeing if you'd had something called an advance. An advance had been, if I had this card down on a prior turn, when you play it, you don't win the terrain piece. But on your next turn, you check for your victory condition. Do I control three? No. Do I have an area where I have a unit and my opponent does not? I'm unopposed. If it's yes, then I would control that piece of terrain, and we would go on about our business. Now let me throw something else in there so I can show you something with light infantry. So that would be the advance. You're just checking, are you unopposed? If yes, you're going to get it. Then you're going to move uh, right into flank attacks. Now I'm going to come back and explain flank attacks at the end of this and try to be a little quick about it. It's a cool little, it's, it's where there's depth in this game. It's a simple, fast playing game that has some depth. We'll come back to that. The main thing you're going to then hit into is your uh, your the fourth part of your turn is going to be actually um, taking your player actions. There's only two. You can either play a unit down or you can attack. So playing a unit down or placing a unit is simply, hey, um, I'm going to put something right here and I'm going to show you real quick before we get into placing so you can see the units. So. Right here we got a light infantry. You're going to see a medium inf or a medium cavalry. That's not what I wanted. I wanted my medium infantry. Hold on, let me grab one. All right. So medium or light infantry, medium, heavy. I wanted to show you real quick just the symbols. So the higher the number, the quicker they are. This will have to do with their ability to retreat out of a conflict if there is a battle. So if your unit's faster than the other unit you can actually pull back, and it keeps them from winning um, a, uh, a terrain piece, or it could keep them from winning a terrain piece if you're able to retreat out. Second is your combat value. It's going to be, you'll be adding it up column to column. How many of those does he have if he's attacking me? I would then be looking at what is my defense ratio. So if you're being attacked, you're adding up your total defense. If they're attacking, or I'm attacking, I'm adding up my total attack value. So you can see right off the bat that heavy infantry is slow, but it packs a bigger punch. It's also got better defense. Kind of right in the middle here, and you can see quick, but eh, not a lot going on. And then you're saying, what is this? This is a chain that just means combine. Normally, if I have my uh, medium infantry over here, I can't add in a heavy inf infantry to it. They've got to be the same type of unit. So I could come in here, and the only thing you get by adding another unit here, generally, if they're the same type, is just a bonus one in combat. So you don't get their full attack value. But this light infantry would allow me to combine in with this medium infantry and get the plus one without having to maybe give up one of my better cards. You can do this with archers and slingers, and there's some different units that have the, the combine uh, mode, which makes a lot of sense. Your archers are hanging out behind your infantry, lobbing arrows in. I'm going to show more cards, keep this thing flowing. So we've got uh, cavalry. You can see again, uh, their movement is much greater. Attack. Uh, we do have, I should have explained here too, these are uh, bonuses that you get for fighting particular units. So if I was going up against elephants with light infantry, well, they're quick, they're nimble, they can get out of the way. They're getting a plus for an attack. They're getting a plus two in defense versus cavalry. So great units to go attack an elephant and wonderful or at least decent units in defense against cavalry. 
you can see it changes here. Here I've got a minus 2 against Calvary. So you can see already, wow, big difference. And then you can see it's a minus 3 versus Calvary. So you're starting to see, oh, they're heavy. They can't move as quick. Down here, this special is a minus 2 in attack versus Pikes, minus 1 elephants. My horse, eh, medium, not so good Calvary there. Here you can see extremely slow, my, uh, my uh, spears, but it, nice attack, great defense. Now, this is the first time we're seeing this. All right, these cards don't have, whoop, oh, that one did. I should have showed you right there. My bad, I'm in a hurry. We're going to start with the spear guy. So if I'm going to play this fella into a space, all right, I'm going to have to discard a card from my hand. If I'm now on a flank, I'm going to have to discard one more extra card. So my spears would end up costing me two cards from my hand just to get them down into the field of play. So you can see light infantry doesn't have any card penalty. All right, My medium infantry would only have a penalty if I were throwing it down on the flank over here. My heavy, same as the spears, one card just to get it down, and if it's a flank, it's a bonus. All right, you can see Calvary's got nothing. You can see here's my archer. All right, he's, he's pretty nimble, doesn't pack a whole lot of punch, but we can see here, plus one, and you'll see there's the shield and the attack symbol. So it's plus one in this, um, uh, and adjacent columns, if on a hill you control. So if you can get them up on a hill, if we had a hill in there, He's sending stuff all over the place. Now we're going to get into the leaders. Leaders are, are much, much different. So in the uh, first glory, uh, or fields of glory, uh, they were used more like, leaders were used more like mana. They were just your money to get things done. Here, they're, they're much more nuanced. So the first thing a leader does, um, a leader can be used to handle your, I'm going to explain this first, to handle your card um, discards. So I play down a heavy infantry, I've got to discard a card. Well, I could instead pull up this leader and say, you know what, he gives me a plus one here on the discard. So I'm going to use him to basically give orders. So that heavy infantry unit is much more efficient as they come in and I'm not burning through other combat cards or unit cards that I might want to use. And you can see this one would give me the equivalent of two cards and two cards. So the leaders can give you um, flexibility in, in your orders. The other part is, this is a bad one, but they can uh, end up helping you in combat. But here's how it works. Um, they're played in in a very interesting way. So let's see here. We've got medium infantry. Let's just draw a unit here. Um, we don't want light infantry. Let me get something here. Okay. Let's say um, this was not in control. We've got something down like this. And you're seeing that we've got three on the defense and I was attacking with four. We, we add those up, it's just these two units, and then my opponent has an option. He can either, he or she can either play a, a leader or any other card, but they're only going to get points for the leader. They can play a leader from their hand and they'll pick up either the defense or the attack value. That could be a bluff. Um, maybe I don't have any leaders in my hand, but I don't want them knowing that. And I, I want to go ahead and, boom, set this down. And they're like, oh my, I better at least burn one of mine too. Who knows? Or I also have the option of instead of taking a card from my hand, I can do a blind draw off of my deck. And if I know I've got, hey, not a single leader in my hand, but man, I've got to have a leader. I've got eight total leaders in my deck. Let me just try and do a blind draw, see if I can get lucky. Sometimes it happens. If you get a leader, you get to add their either combat value or defense value to your attack or your defense, in which case I would now have six. The fellow over here, he doesn't have to, but let's say he decides to do a blind draw. He pulls this off the top of his deck. 
It's just a heavy infantry. It's discarded. It's not a leader. He can't add to his defense. He's only got a defense of three. The unit's defeated. It would be destroyed. It's now out of the game. It won't be available for a reshuffle. And I advance and take control. Sorry, I don't advance. I just take control of that area due to my overwhelming win. Now, Leaders don't ever get destroyed, but they are discarded afterward. They don't stay and engage in battles. They're always just popping in and offsetting a discard to place a unit, or they're coming in and affecting either the defense or the attack. Now, they do have special abilities that are different as well. Um, so here, if combat is tied, you win. If opponent's card also uh, says this, combat remains tied. Okay. All right. So you got your tiebreaker. Um, I love... This fella, I needed to draw a leader real bad in the game. I pulled it, was like, yes! And then I go and take a closer look, and it's my minus one, and he ended up making me lose the battle. He didn't help out at all. He took me down, in this case, it'd be from a four to a three, and I was like, well, that's a crappy leader. So you're like, why would you want to have him? Well, I would be using him for this discard deal. Maybe he's great at giving some orders. Boom. Now the nice thing is, you can mix these actions up all you want. I could do, I could play a card down and attack. I can then play a different card down, or maybe I wanted to attack in another area. So you can do play a card, uh, discard something, play another card. Whoop, now I want to attack with this one. Hey, I want to attack with this one. So you're able to mix and match, it's, and it's popping like this. I mentioned earlier the withdrawal. So... Let's say he did have light cavalry, all right? I've got my medium infantry. I'm attacking with a four. He's only got a two. Um, he doesn't have a leader in his hand, but he realizes this guy's faster. He's a three to my two. Well, he can just pull him out of the combat and discard him. I did not win the fight, so I don't get to turn the card to my control. So what I'm able to do is maybe stall out a little bit, and he's got to reset up uh, in order to fight for this space again. Now, now again, maybe on my turn, I want to come put something in that'll beat him here. Because if what happens again if I leave this unopposed after the end of my turn? If I leave it, leave it unopposed, he's going to be able to turn it over to his side during his, quote, advance stage. But that's where your speed comes in. You can just bail out. This card would have been destroyed. The light, or the light infantry card would have been destroyed. Um, in this case, it's just discarded. All right, I told you I'd show you the flank a little bit later. So now that you know just how simple combat is, I want to show you the flank side of it. So um, let's say I'd had something set up like this. I've just begun my turn. The first thing I did was check to see, do I control three of the um, uh, terrain cards? No, I don't, so I didn't win. The second thing I do is I check for the advanced stage. So if I had something uh, unopposed, I turn it to my control. Yes, great. So I've got control of that card there, that's nice. The second, or the third thing I'm going to check here is the flank. And you can already see what's going to happen here. Now, um, when you look for the flank attack move, I'm going, if I can pull it off, I get a, I can choose either unit and I get a plus two. So in this case, I've set it up to be quite simple uh, because if I'd had this over here, not only would I have a possible flank, but I need to have an unopposed area in front of this one, and I need to have an unopposed area in the next one over. So if he'd had something even as simple as this, and I had this situation, I would not be able to flank and get my bonus two because this unit would prevent that. But of course, if I'm over on this side, and this is already a flank card anyway, there's nothing else to the left, I don't have to worry about any units over here. There are none. So it really encourages you to try to turn the flank at the edge of the battle space. So let's say this is how it was set up. I do have the flank. I could choose to attack with either unit. The, uh, this one would have a four. 
I would go with the four. I'm going to get a plus two for the unit being in a flank position, bringing me up to six against his three defense. We would do the same deal where if I had a leader, I could either play one out of my hand, I could fake him, and you know maybe I got some junk card I don't want, and he thinks I've got a leader that I'm getting ready to throw on there. I doubt I'd do that here. But let's just say I got my leader. He flips over a leader that he has. Maybe he just draws off the top of his deck. I don't have time to find one. Okay, he doesn't find a leader at all. I'm like, you know what? I really don't want to lose this. So now I'm at four, five, six, seven, eight. I would win. He's been defeated. This card's destroyed. And I would turn this as well. Now again, my leader would be uh, discarded. It's not destroyed. It's just discarded. Doesn't stay on the, on the field of battle. Then I would go into my phase four, which is my standard place or attack. But you can see, I still haven't secured three, three uh, uh, terrain cards. And even if I were to get another one, my opponent's going to have a turn to try to flip one of these neutral or for them to even take control of one. So you've got to control enough that at the beginning of your turn, I have three, and I'm grabbing leaders, I have three, and I win. All right, we're back. Again, so you've seen it. If you like um, a lighter tactical game with a depth that's handled elegantly and simply, look for this from PSC. See you guys. Chief. Chief.